Okay, so in this example, I'm going to show you guys how I built this data dashboard right here. And we've seen already how we can plot a label into the future and how to plot one label. And we've seen how to plot the dynamic text changing variables to strings inside the labels. And we've seen how to create new lines. So let's put that all together and make, make this. So in the previous video, I showed this, the setters and getters. And I'll be using some more of those throughout this. Now let's look at the core for our example that I'm going to be using. So these first three lines are there's an input for the dashboard offset. So they move that left and right. And then we're getting the offset here using the time, the previous time. We've seen that the offset label is going to be five by default. And here I have the title of our dashboard and then I'm just assigning another variable called splitter and that's just going to be what's going to split each of these um, different sections with these lines. We're going to use these little lines here and then the NL is just a short variable for this right here to create a new line and I can put them all on the same line. If you didn't know that you can do that. So instead of doing something like this, I can make my code more compact by putting it all in the same line. We just need to make sure there's commas. Okay. So let's save that. And I get a little error here because there's no output yet. So these next three lines, I'm just declaring a dynamic text variable. And I put this string here. I don't have to put that there. I just for anyone who's reading the code, they'll know that's a string if it's not already obvious but I'm just concatenating the title data dashboard plus a new line plus the splitter plus a new line. And then I'm creating an ID. So variable delete. We've seen this before. So I have an ID here for a label and it's going to be a new label at the time, the offset into the future. And there we go. So we had the data dashboard, which is the title. It drops down, makes a new line, puts the splitter in and drops down again with a new, new line. So there's a blank space here. Cool. All right. So these lines here, I have some inputs that I've made. I have a look back period, kind of like a window to look back into. And then these are going to be each of the modules that we're going to be going to have on the dashboard. And I'm going to have a statistics module, momentum oscillators module, volume stuff and signals. And these are just Boolean inputs. So just going to be a toggle to turn them on and off. And by default, they're all true. So we have this function, which we've seen. Um, I took this from the pine coders. It's just a nice function for rounding the decimals for displaying them. And I built this little string helper here. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So the first part is going to be the statistics section. And what I've done here is pretty straightforward. So I made a title for our, this section and I'm using that splitter, which is these, these lines. Then I have a new line drop underneath it and I put statistics, which is going to be the, the name of the title and then a new line and a new line. So it's going to create two blank spaces underneath it. And then I'm just calculating some different statistical methods here. So I have the standard deviation, and the SMA, which is going to be the mean, the highest, which would be the max, and the lowest, which would be the min. And I'm just using the same look back that we would declare it up here, which would be 100. So in a window 100, it's going to get all these statistics for that, for 100 bars. And then to show them, I put them all in this variable called stats. So I have this input here for I show stats. So if this is true, then do all this stuff. Right. And if it's false, then just return NA. That's it. So when it's true, I'm going to want to take the stats title plus this string here, which will be passed into the string helper. So I'm going to plot this, the standard deviation. Let me save this and show you. So visually, it might look a little bit better. Um, okay. So I just saved that real quick so we could actually see and visualize this as I'm, as I'm showing you the code and how it's working. So 
up here, I have the settings, show statistics. This will be the only Boolean that works right now. These ones are going to be off. But when it's off, it just returns NA, nothing gets plotted. When it's on, drops in this column here. And we have statistics title, which is that right there. And then I'm passing it the standard deviation, which is computed right here. We have standard deviation being computed. And this negative one is the what we're rounding it to. So I actually modified the the pine coders thing here. So if I pass it a negative one, it's not going to round it at all. It's just going to return the original value that was passed to it. So that does nothing uh, because I don't want to round the stand standard deviation in this case because it can it can be different for depending on what you're what you're using there's Bitcoin or if I'm on like, for example, if I was on say XRP or something, or maybe see a coin, just something with a very low value. And if I go ahead and I have this, this rounding hard coded to like two, two numbers, two decimal points after, then I won't see anything. I won't be able to see the standard deviation here. So I just left it negative one right now. And then for the string helper, I pass it a prefix. So I want standard deviation to be in front of that. Plus these little semicolons here. So it separates the title, the prefix and the number. And then this is the response from this two string method, which is going to round it with whatever I passed a negative one. So nothing It's going to return me the standard deviation. It's going to convert it to a string that gets put in there. And then that gets concatenated onto the prefix and it returns a new line with it as well. And that's it. And that's all that's happening right there. And it's doing the same thing for all the other indicators that I wanted to show. So for the mean it's doing the same thing for the local max, it's doing the same thing. And for the local minimum, it's doing the same thing. And you can see all of that being reflected right here for the momentum section. I'm doing a lot of the same things. Okay. I had the same title logic here with the splitter, new line, the title, and then two new lines. So I get these nice spaces. And then I'm computing different momentum algorithms, the RSI, the CCI momentum and the money flow index. And then I'm doing the same thing here. Just called this variable moms. Well, if you want to show moms, then put the title in plus and then pass everything that we want into the string helper with the necessary prefixes. And if we're not showing, just return NA. So let's put this in. And you can see dynamic text is being set with the label dot set text. And we're just passing the ID. So now we have statistics and momentum. You can turn this off and turn, turn that off. I can only have this one on. And there you go. And these are all rounded. I think I used some rounding in here. Yeah, so the rounded one decimal place after one, one, one. And I did the same thing for everything else. Okay, so volatility and volume section, same volume, same title, logic, computing an ATR and the average volume, just taking an SMA of the volume within the same look back window. And then I'm just assigning everything to one variable called vols. And that's all the strings that I want in that. Then I had the Boolean, the title, and I'm doing the same thing here. And now I can add that all into one variable that holds all of my dynamic text, setting it. And then now I should have volume pop up, volume and volatility. I have the ATR and the average volume. Now the average volume could probably be rounded here. There's much work to be done. But this should get you guys started for some really cool dashboards. And then we have a signals idea here with the same thing title. And I'm just using the MACD, taking the MACD for the MACD. If you've never used it before, it returns a tuple. And we get the MACD return, the MACD signal, and the MACD histogram. And in order to capture these values, you just need to put them in these brackets. So there's nothing really special there. And I'm just checking, okay, so if the MACD histogram is greater than zero, then return this string called bullish. And if it's not, it's equal to zero or less than zero, 
then return bolt bearish. And that's just some generic MACD trading logic. It's like a filter. And I'll call this one six. Maybe it should be called filters. But either way, let's say it's, it's showing the trend. And we have the title, signals, show signal for a Boolean if we want to turn that on and off. And the trend plus the trend is going to be what we call here. So is it going to be bullish or is it going to be bearish? Maybe that should be called filter, but it doesn't matter. So SIGs, and there you go. So now we have all of our modules all on one label, all being updated in real time. But it's still, it's kind of ugly. All the text is centered. Maybe you want to move it to the left. Maybe you want to change the color. Maybe move this, change the label type. So let's do that. So we can style this thing with the some of the setters here and I have this link here if you want to check that out it's on tradingview.com for the available label styles I won't go through them all but let's align it to the left the text save that and now all the text is on the left side and we can change the color to black well that's not very nice so we also should change the text color to white where text color to white now we get a nice contrast okay with this line and we can change the style and the style is just what the label looks like so label set to style and now this little arrow is pointing to close or the high whatever we set that y value to on the label well in this case it's the close and the high so those setters are all the same you just pass them two variables the id and whatever you're setting so this in this case is id and text align this one's gonna be id and color id and text color and id and style and there's other setters and getters that i showed up here that you can play around with so we can also use getters to get the text or an x value or a y value or a y value so let's get the actual text and change it. So here I'm using label.getText, and I just need to pass it the ID of the label. I want to get the text, and it's going to return everything that's inside of this into this identifier. So right now that doesn't do anything. We need to do something with that text. So there is a built in function that takes a string and it will replace parts of that string. So in this case, it's going to take whatever I pass it, which is going to be all this text, and then I'm going to pass it um, a variable. Well, in this case, it's called stats. So this is everything I, I placed in the stats variable up here. And then if it matches that, if that matches, then replaces replace that with just an empty string. So it replaces all those, everything in the stats section will just be replaced with nothing. And I just set the text to the new label text because I re I, the, re, the result of this was returned into this, into label text, the same thing, I just reassigned it. And I set text, ID, label text. And watch that disappear. And now we don't have that anymore. And I can do the same thing, but give you a better visual representation. So let me take all the Ds and just convert them to, I don't know, eights. But this is so you see the data dashboard. See now it's eight, eight. So whatever it needs to match it perfectly. If I put in data there, now it's eight dashboard. So it just replaces the string. Okay. And here we can set the tooltip. This is really cool. So I'm removing the stats from here, but I'm just now I'm just placing the stats into the tooltip. Well, in this case, I didn't remove the stats. But now, if we hover over this, the statistics pop up as a tooltip, which is really nice. Now, let's use a getter to change the background and the text. So, let me see if the trend is bullish, maybe we want to change this entire label to green. And I believe that's what I'm doing here. So, I have, I'm just checking this variable we made at top. And it's a, since it's a string, I'm just going, if it's equal to bullish, we made that right here. 
Oh, let me grab this. It's got to got to be a complete match, right? So if it's equal to that, then get the text from this label, from this ID, reassign it to label text. Then replace everything in it. I just want to replace the splitter in this case. The splitter is this, these lines, if you forgot. And replace it with these arrow up text. I guess to show that we are trending up. It's bullish. And then set that text and also change the color of the label to green. And it looks like we got a little error. Undeclared identifier label text. Okay, so now, now the entire label is green only when it's bullish. Now if I switch around, yeah, see in this case it's bearish and it's black. But when we go to the daily, it's bullish and now it changes green. So label highlights. Labels are limited to around 500 labels at any one time, but the default is 50. And to set a higher limit, you need to see the max, set the max lines count in the study declaration statement at the top of your script. Labels can display dynamic text. I think we've seen that. And labels are great for displaying lots of complex data. 